So with this system, you can set up primary doors and secondary doors. Any of your primary doors, you know, some campers have two or three exit doors. You can set those as main doors and they'll all give you that delay to go in and put the passcode. If you set up a secondary door like on your storage compartments and somebody comes along and opens one of these and you automatically get that alarm that'll go off. The police light flashed. Oh no. Seriously, this light right here, that flashed. Like it's calling the police. I'm sure it's fine. Just die. Good morning. We're at what is without a doubt the nicest campground I've ever been to. Mistletoe State Park in Appling, Georgia. We got this spot that is like on a peninsula. So our camper with those windows all the way around it is finally taking advantage of that view. I friggin love it. This is, oh God, it's awesome. Anyway, today I wanna to talk about RV security. If this is your first time to our channel, I'll give you a little backstory. Last year when the world got stupid, I lost my job and we decided to sell our house, buy our camper and hit the road full time. It's been the best thing that's ever happened to us. It, it really has. Before we hit the road, one of the things that our friends and family were most concerned about was you know, how we're gonna stay safe. Cause I mean, let's face it, the world's a little crazy right now. You know, how are you guys gonna stay safe? How are you gonna protect yourselves, protect your stuff while you're on the road? Well, I like to say that I've got ways of protecting my family, but let's be honest, the way I usually answer that question, it's really a last line of defense. So I wanted to add a couple extra layers of security before it gets that far, if you know what I mean. So for the first layer, I replaced every lock on the camper with brand new lock from RV Lock. For the second layer, I installed a complete security system from Ring that includes cameras, an alarm, and sensors on basically everything that could possibly go wrong that will notify me if something happens. So let's talk about the RV lock. This is the, the heart of the system. This is their most popular product. You've probably seen a bunch of people install these in their campers. So this is the keyless lock. You just punch in a passcode and you can lock or unlock your camper, which is great because if we're out somewhere and we wanna to go to the pool or wanna to go to the lake and we don't wanna take the keys with us, you just punch in your code and you can lock it. It also comes with a key fob, so if you get too lazy to punch in a code, you can just hit a button. And the installation on that was super easy. The instructions basically say, take out your old lock, put in your new lock. Remove your existing door handle, four screws, two screws, yada, yada, yada. Install the new one. Pretty straightforward. Oh. Okay. Crazy. Alright, so far so good. And if your door lock doesn't look exactly like this, they've got a few different models. So I can just about guarantee they've got one to fit your rig. in let's plug this up beeping at me I guess it's a good sign that's in there make sure the door shuts Next, we get the key fob. Turn the switch on on the back of your handle. Oh, so you can completely disable the fob. Press lock unlock to confirm successful activation. 
How about that? Yeah, <laughs> awesome. Okay. <laughs> I'm, I'm having too much fun with that. So those are really popular upgrades with the RV industry. Uh, RV lock actually has locks that you can get for every other door in your camper. And the neat thing about it is you can get them all keyed the same. We actually had three different keys that came with this camper uh, because we got two different styles of locks on our compartments. That's like your standard barrel lock and that's the slam latch. So uh, all three doors had different keys, but now they've all got the same key. Now, if, if you already have one of the RV locks and you want to replace your others and have it keyed the same, you can still do that. Uh, your key will actually have a three digit code on it. If you find that code and give that to them when you order the rest of your locks, they can cut keys for those to match what you've already got. Installation on these barrel locks is, again, super simple. If you got the slam latch, you might have a couple rivets in there that you'll have to drill out, but not that big of a deal. It's pretty simple. Thing went flying. Really? I think I heard a splash out there. <laughs> it did come with another one of these. I've heard that people have tried to swap those out and it's a little bit bigger opening and they got to go in there and cut out some sheet metal. So I don't, I'm going to try it without it and see if it works. Same key that I got out of one of the other lock bags. Oh yeah. There we go. Okay, so that's the first layer of protection. For the second layer, just in case somebody were to get past all these new locks, we wanted to know about it. So we picked up the eight-piece security kit from Ring that's got a base station, a keypad, and it had, I think, four door contacts, and then an extender and a motion detector. And then I also added the camera and a few other little accessories, like I got three water and freeze detectors that'll let us know if we have any water issues, and I also got an upgraded smoke detector and CO2 detector that will tie in with the system and notify us if something goes wrong there. I want to mention, too, that none of the stuff in this video is sponsored. I haven't signed up to be a partner with anybody I know a lot of other channels do that and review their products. I haven't done, maybe I should look into that. I may do that, but I haven't yet. So whatever you're gonna hear today is gonna be completely brutally honest. Now I know that Ring is famous because of their doorbell. I think it's what they're named after. Started to go that route, but I got to looking at where we could put it on the camper. Anywhere in this area just kind of be awkward because you got this bar in the way, and then plus it points straight out. So the view that you'd be getting is like that. You know, you'd only, you'd see the slide and you'd see that bar. Even with the wide angle, you wouldn't see the whole campsite. So what I did instead was get the stick up camera and mount it up next to the door where you'd normally see a security camera. Gives us a better field of view. Um, I think the picture's a little bit better too, because it's not as stretched, it's a lot more focused. Of course, you can set it to notify you if, if somebody walks into your zone. Uh, you can lay out the zone however you want. Like I could draw a box around this campsite so that I can only pick up motion here. That's really handy in a campground because your site size changes all the time. So if your neighbor comes out to dump his black tank or something, you don't want it sending you a bunch of notifications about that. So you can block that off. And whenever we get ready to leave, see that little gray part back there? That stays on the camper. The rest of it just comes right off. I used that double-sided 3M trim tape. Had no issues with anything coming off there. It's been rock solid. All right, let's go inside. I'll show you the components in there. Ding, ding. So in here we got the keypad, just like you'd have in a residential alarm system. You can disarm it, and then you got home and away modes. You just punch in a passcode and set that. You can do a lot of stuff on your phone too, but it's good to have a physical backup. In here in the kids' room, on top of this cabinet is where I installed all the internet goodies. That white box right there is the base station for the ring. It's here in the kids' room. This is, it's a mid bunk, so this is centrally located. I did a 12 volt outlet up top. Put up a uh, put a power inverter up there, so we'd have constant battery power. So I've got the router and our modem, and now the ring base station all sitting up top there. So it's right in the middle. 
good coverage on everything. So this is the new smoke detector from First Alert. Yeah, I got it crooked. Yeah, it bugs me, but whatever. This links up with the ring base station too, and will tell us if we get smoke or CO2 issues. There's actually another option for the smoke detectors, CO2 detectors and all that. Uh, ring has a, a listener that will listen for the sound of those detectors. I chose to go this route because I'd read a bunch of reviews that the, the listeners were setting off false alarms. This is where not being a sponsored video comes in really handy. I read one story where somebody had the professional monitoring service and their battery started dying on the smoke detector and it triggered that alarm. And the fire department came out and charged them $800 to change a battery. And they couldn't cancel it. They couldn't cancel the response. So living in the camper, you know, we're at a different address all the time. So the address that's on record isn't ours. It's our home address. So I'd hate for my smoke detector to go off in Montana because the battery's dead. And then the fire department goes to a house back in Tennessee that we don't even live at and charges us 800 bucks for it. So that's why I chose to go that route. Now the kit that I got came with a bunch of these little door contacts, so of course we're going to put one on the main door and I've also got one on each one of the storage compartments. And this is cool because we can get a notification if somebody opens a door. Not only does it ding there, it can actually send us a message to our phones if we want it to. So we'll know if the kids are trying to sneak out and run off somewhere. I don't know, honey, would we complain if they just snuck out and ran off somewhere? I guess, like I, 10 minutes. Yeah. I, Good 10 minutes. And then I got three of these little flood and freeze sensors. We put these underneath the kitchen sink, underneath the bathroom sink, and then also put one out in the wet bay. That's where our Nautilus system is. It's where all of our water connections hook up. So that's where we're most likely to have a water leak. These not only give you a notification if it detects water, but it'll also tell you if it gets below freezing. So you don't have to worry about your lines freezing up. Okay. I've never been back here, so not sure what I'm getting myself into, but I'm hoping I can just set that sucker in here somewhere and it'll work. Huh. Okay, that's not bad. But the biggest thing I'm worried about with all those connections, if one of those decides to leak, it could turn into a gigantic mess. So we'll put this sucker right down here. And we'll put one little strip of this on the back of it just to keep it from moving around. There we go. That should do the trick if it just connects. All this stuff is really easy to set up too. The instructions will literally say, hey, you don't need me. You can use the app on your phone. So you can go into the app and, uh, oh, hey, there's me. Hey, what's up? You can change your status up here just like you can on the keypad, you know, disarmed, home, away. You can go to alarm and you've got all your components listed. There's my smoke and CO2 detectors, base station keypad, bathroom sink, kitchen sink, Nautilus, that's all my uh, water and freeze detectors. Then front storage, I've got a, a, that motion detector I ended up putting in the front storage compartment. All the other doors have the contact sensors. And it's real easy to configure these things. You can make each component do different things in each mode. And if you want to add a new device to it, just go to set up a device. And you can see there everything they've got to choose from. This thing can even control door locks. I wish it worked with the RV lock, but it doesn't. I'd love to figure out a way to rig that up. I don't know, that's getting a little too lazy. It would be nice to know if our door was actually locked or unlocked. So hey, RV lock, if y'all can get with ring and figure out what it takes to make that happen, I'd greatly appreciate it. So let me show you how this works. Punch in your code, hit away mode. Delay started. Then you get that exit delay. So that means you got 60 seconds to get out before the thing arms. I can actually look at my phone. You see a little progress bar right there? 
There we go. So now when I go to open the door, it'll give me 60 seconds to put in my code and disarm the system. At least it should. Entry delay started, you hear that? Disarmed. Safe. All right, we're going to rearm it. Sensors require bypass. Oh, because the door's open. Exit delay started. Yeah, you get all kinds of notif I mean, like everything that happens, you can set it to notify you. So with this system, you can set up primary doors and secondary doors. Any of your primary doors, you know, some campers have two or three exit doors. You can set those as main doors and they'll all give you that delay to go in and put the passcode. If you set up a secondary door, like on your storage compartments and somebody comes along and opens one of these and you automatically get that alarm that'll go off. This light right here that flashed like it's calling the police. I'm sure it's fine. Oops. <laughs> At least we know that works. And we know what it sounds Yeah. What, what did it sound like? Was it bad? It sounded like. Oh, Woo! Oh, oh, oh. Okay, so I don't have to worry about it calling the cops or the fire department or anything. Ring has a couple different levels of monitoring. So you can do self-monitoring, uh, which is what we've got, where if something happens, you get a notification on your phone and you gotta deal with it that way. Uh, and of course you get the sirens and all this stuff on the inside. Professional monitoring is where it links up to the internet and it'll contact their call center if something happens. And then they'll automatically call whoever needs to come out. So if the smoke detector goes off, they'll call the fire department. If some idiot comes along and opens up your storage compartment, it'll call the cops. I chose not to go that route because we're in a different place all the time and it's not GPS based. It's based on whatever address you put into the system. You know, for us, that's our home of record. I mean, it'd be cool if it could hunt you down wherever you're at, but it just doesn't work that way. Even with the self monitoring, this is good enough for us because this gives us a little bit of peace of mind knowing that, you know, if, if we're out somewhere, one, we've got a physical layer of protection because we've made it more difficult for people to get into this thing. And two, not only are we going to see what's going on in our campsite, but we're going to get notifications about everything that could possibly go wrong. So the way the world is these days, it pays to have a little bit of extra protection. And of course, if anybody manages to get past layer one and layer two, there's always number three, but we're not going to talk about that one. Just make sure if you have that third layer protection, make sure you're trained make sure you keep it safe. Can't stress that enough. Now with the RV locks, I don't care if you're full time or if you're just traveling on the weekends, I think that's an upgrade that everybody needs to look at. Just like when you buy a house, the first thing you do is change the locks. I think everybody should do that when you first buy a camper. The security system on the other hand, you gotta have a stable internet connection. Meaning that's not something you wanna go out and set up on campground Wi-Fi. And I don't know that you'd wanna run it on one of those little jet packs either. You know, if you're just going out on the weekends, the security system may be a little much, but if you're on the road full time and you've got your own dedicated internet connection, your own dedicated Wi-Fi network, then this is a good option. So I'm pretty happy with the stuff that we've got installed. You know, I've only had it for a day, so I'll give you a long-term review on it later. But again, this isn't sponsored. I bought this stuff on my own, did my own research, and I felt like this was the best solution for us. Hopefully it's a good solution for you too. If you got any questions about it, throw it down in the comments. I'll, I'll try to respond to them as quick as I can but we gotta get packed up and hit the road. Today's moving day. We just kicked off season three, filming for season three. It'll be a couple months before these videos start rolling out, but this is our first campsite of the season. I don't think we're gonna top this. I really don't. 
Well, I don't know the next campground's on an island. I don't think it's gonna have this kind of a view though. Anyway, speaking of the next campground, as Jerry Reed would say, we got a long way to go and a short time to get there. So we're gonna pack up and hit the road. If you wanna see where this journey takes us, or if you wanna see where we've been so far, you know what to do. I'm not gonna say it. I know that gets old. Thanks for stopping by. We'll see you on the highway.